Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about death and life, a little bit of philosophy, philosophical discussion this morning. Um, and we're going to start with what is a death doula? It's kind of a newer profession. Uh, it's kind of cropping onto the scene a little bit. We're going to discuss our own individual personal philosophies around life and death. Um, life tends to, death tends to beget death or death tends to beget life, right? Um, preparation for the inevitable. Are you prepared? Do you need to be prepared? What happens if you are? And then, you know, what kind of happens? Um, exploring the idea that grief is a gift and there's a lot of goodness there, as well as um, where we can find each other. If you guys want to get in touch with um, my friend Jen, who's a death doula, and I'll let her introduce herself. Uh, my name is Jennifer Matamoros. I live in Hotchkiss, Colorado, and I took my death doula ship last year through a company called Death Wives. Um, I am new to this experience, but I am not new to death, nor am I new to the macabre. It's been something that I've been interested in since I was little. I think I remember being 10 years old and Hellraiser came out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what nine or 10 year old really gets enthralled in that, but I got so into the macabre on that level that I went to school for um, makeup so I could do horror makeup. And I even did... Uh, a CD cover for a punk rock band in San Francisco in my 20s and I got to do a whole horror scene for them so that mm -hmm. was a lot of fun but there's just something about it that's it's scary it's spooky but in the end death is a reality and if we don't become comfortable with it it's going to be very very challenging once it comes and I know people don't like talking about it and I I think that's just been what's placed in our minds in our hearts mm -hmm. right like it's a fear yeah. and there are biblical things that state that death is you know, you're going to burn in hell. What a scary idea. And yeah. so I don't know if things really stemmed from that, because if you look at other, like you look at the Egyptians, they honor and worship death on oh that level, gosh. right? Like what do they do to their people? They, they take out their organs, they place them all around their body. They wrap their bodies up so their bodies can stay saved and, and slowly mummify. And, and, then they put them in these beautiful tombs. So it's filled such, with all the goodness of yeah, life. And depending on your level, like gold, Honey and gold and, exactly. Yeah, jewels. Like cats specifically on top of all That's of it, so right? Good. It's just so crazy. It so is. there's just so many things up and down about this, and the spectrum is so big. I'd like to bring it to life so we mm -hmm. can be comfortable with it. And it's yeah. a very challenging thing to be comfortable with that. I, I mourn with the best of them when it mm -hmm. happens, but at the same time, what a good release for that person finally to be able to be wherever they believe they're going. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Like the way Rumi talks about death is we live this life and every day is a day closer to death and in my interpretation of his poetry. And then we get to go home, home being whatever we view yeah. after we live this life of being a human and learning these lessons here on this earth. And then we go to whatever the next stage of transformation may or may not be. Yeah. For whatever you believe. Right. Mm -hmm. I think when death comes up, the biggest fear for people is pain. Yeah. And that's what's scary. That's my fear. I am okay with dying. I am okay with saying like, oh, I'm done. But I don't want it to hurt. Yeah. And I think that's what scares me from actually moving forward in that process. Other than that, though, I mean, I've sat and I've watched and had, unfortunately, so many people in my life pass, whether it be by their own hand or by accident. Yeah. And over and over and over again, I see this mourning. And what I think what we don't realize about mourning in general is it's, it's what we're mourning. It's not the person. They're no longer here. They're free. Freedom. Exactly. Yeah. They're free from whatever was mm -hmm. tying them, whatever was hurting them. And, and we've lost something. So we're grieving our loss. And that tends to be what people think about death. For sure. And so with death dealership, it's a space to come in and hold space for the people that are leaving. And, and there's a, a post-mortem, there's a midnight hour, and then there's a whole process if you know that you're passing. And the death doula will come in and sit with you. So we cannot do anything medical, no nurse. Uh, we can't do anything that has to do with providing medication. But what I can do in a couple examples mm -hmm. that I have had um, let's say, I don't know if everyone knows, but in Colorado, you're able to, um, what is it called? Uh, when you can go in and apply to, it's the end of life. Oh, right. Death with dignity. Yes. So it's yeah. death with, death with, death with dignity in Colorado. And all that means is if you have a terminal illness and you have six months left to live, 
you will go to two different doctors and if you get the same diagnosis from both doctors, you are able to euthanize yourself at a certain point. Now, the challenge here is I cannot perform that for you. I cannot give you that drink. I cannot make you drink it. You have to be physically capable of doing that yourself. So exactly. let's do a scenario where we have someone that's going through that. Mm -hmm. In that process, I have been sitting with you, let's say, let's say for a month because you know that it's, it's getting there. Yeah. You've gotten your application done. You've gotten the approval. You have the stuff to take your life when it's time. And it's, it's a drink and you just go to sleep, right? So in this process, now you're going to be planning mm -hmm. and hopefully what you're planning is for everything to be easier for your loved ones. And if you're by yourself, you're saying goodbye to the people that you cared about. So if you want me to help you write letters mm. to everyone, if you want to set up that we're going to buy flowers for everybody the moment that you pass, and we will send them to those people to let them know that you really cared and loved for them. Mm. It's just That's this nice. control mm -hmm. over the idea that you're no longer going to be here. Right. And so when that time comes, if you want your hair a certain color, if you want a massage, if you want these things, I'm also a massage therapist and a Reiki practitioner, so I can bring that into my practice. And most death doulas have more than just a doula ship under their belt. They've mm -hmm. got other skills, you know? Sure. Um, so it's, it's time for you to go. We've set all of those things up. We've planned. We know what your favorite outfit is that you want to die in. Mm -hmm. We know what you want your hair to look like. We know what you want your final meal to be. So we sit and we experience and appreciate all of those things. Mm -hmm. And then you take your medicine and I sit with you until it's time. You have a nurse in the room usually, or if you're there by yourself, you've got monitors to make sure that you have, you know, your flatlining at that point. Yeah. Um, but when we get there, you know, after that, then you come the postpartum and the postpartum is making sure that everything is taken care of that you have put together. Mm -hmm. And so that death doula is really holding space for anyone who needs that, whether it's an entire family with someone that's in hospice, a bit more challenging because hospice is a bit more medically yeah. involved, but it's just someone to take away the heavy, I think, yeah. more than anything, to help plan, to give you ideas, to sit and read a book of poetry. Yeah, orientation. If, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if people don't want it and their spouse wants it because their spouse is having a hard time dealing, a doula can come in and do that as well. They're going to mm -hmm. sit with that spouse. And what you start to notice is even the people who don't really think they want it, because in the end, who wants to die? Not many people. I mean, you become comfortable with the idea. Sure. But when you know if you have no control over what's going on, it's kind of a kick in the ass, right? It's. I mean, yeah. And, and so that person who's going to be losing you, they need someone to sit with them as well. Yeah. So it's really sounding like since we've moved more into a secular society, we haven't got the same amount of like ushering through the Correct. religious different religious affiliations because I'm thinking like movies where there's like a, a church in the hospital and like oh mom is there and like her kid had just got hit in motor motorcycle accident and he's mm -hmm. dying and she's need she's needing solace from the pastor or priest that's at this um, church we don't really have those anymore not so really. we really are looking for some kind of way to bring in the philo philosophical emotional like spiritual tending without it being called that so it's less scary for people that have had you know, speaking for my own, like a uh, Christian Baptist upbringing, a little bit of like dings there because being told I'm going to hell and everybody else that is not Christian yeah. is going to hell. I'm like, whoa, that's really, that's a really intense, it's intense thing to say. Right? So people that live in the middle of nowhere without access to quote unquote, unquote modern society that don't know what Christianity is, they're just like going to hell period end of subject. That was always something that never <laughs> sat right with me. I absolutely understand. I went to private school and that's where I graduated from and I went through the same thing. So it's an an isolation. It pulls people away from that community. And community is really what I was having this conversation the other day, actually. And, and please, no offense to anyone, the, the church is not why people want to be a part of it. It's the community that comes along with it that supports you. Now, whatever your religion is and what you believe, that is absolutely all on you and what, you know, I honor all of that yes, for always. you. But really, if you look deep, it's that community. And when you isolate someone from that community because they don't believe what you believe how lonely of a space to be for sure so you're right that does bring in this opportunity and it opens it up you don't have to be religious in order to have a safe and mm -hmm. happy death no. <laughs> it's so strange to say that but you you don't need that and 
everyone needs comfort. We're all human beings Mm -hmm. and we all need that comfort and that handhold at the end. And there are just so many things that come along with it. Death is already scary as it is. The planning is already very overwhelming. I mean, you and I have talked about it at our age and our age differences that Mm -hmm. you are looking at planning even at your age. I think it is the smartest thing to no matter what age you are, to start planning. Have a living will. Yep. Do things that will allow you to have ease at the end of that. Because I'll tell you what, no matter what happens when you die, there is so much that hits you and oh you don't God. think. You don't remember. I watched my mom. So my mom woke up one morning and found my stepfather um, dead in her bed. And what an awful thing. After 17 years, they had just moved to a new home in Tennessee and they, and COVID was happening. So they didn't really get to meet their neighbors. They kind of knew a few of the people around, but my mom is 64 and and he was 59. And that's a very early age. Definitely. Two weeks before he had a clean bill of health from the doctor. He had um, gone through things where they had gotten him off of insulin. Like he was a very healthy man at that point, but we don't know what happened prior to all of that health, which digs way deeper into taking care of yourself throughout your entire life. Not just as you get older. Well, the conventional medical community (laughs) using a test for lipid measuring that is from the fifties. And we've learned a few things about lipids since then. Exactly. I've had patients that have had major heart attacks that looked perfectly fine on labs. 100%. So is lipids the only thing that tells us that there's going to be a um, cardiac issue? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so either. And I so think we've that's made really... things to be a little bit too simplified. Yeah. <laughs> so when that comes up and all of a sudden you have this thing that happens, mm-hmm. watching her and seeing her just go into autopilot, yeah. that's where I felt like I had my first death doula ship before I became a doula. And that's why I went into it because for some reason I was able to sit and hold space for this entire group of people who are mourning, but still mourn with them. That's the other thing about doula ship. And it was one of my biggest questions in there because I'm such an emotional human being. And I asked my, my teachers, can I cry with them? And she was like, do you know the comfort that would come with Mm -hmm. a stranger pouring out their feelings and just holding space and also mourning that space. And so it allows you this humanity to open up with other people yeah. and to watch someone's parents mm-hmm. look at their child to outlive that, right? Like yeah. to console those and to watch the weeping and the things that go on. That's the other thing with death. Like it's okay to weep. It's okay to throw yourself on the casket. And be it's okay to and just be and... a disaster. Yeah. And when they take you in a funeral home, that is very, very, I don't know. I, I think that it's, it's a very hospital like, right? And <laughs> For sure. Living funerals um, and, and the greenery and all of that are, are so much be- more beautiful and they're coming into space, but they remove those that are mourning away from everyone else and put them in a private room. And I think about that now. If you think mm. about that, like that seemed very normal, like, oh, let's go console you. But they're not consoling they're hiding you. They're hiding the your pain. Ooh. Big, right? Like yeah. big boom. When I realized that, I was like, holy shit, it seems kind. And it probably is from their perspective. But, but you're not. taking away the ability for that community who has showed up for you to hold that space for you. And that is something I have a huge contention with having just recently had my own big loss and I've had both of my parents die in my life is not feeling comfortable expressing my emotions with other people there because I grew up with the message that emotions beget weakness. If you are crying, if you're sad, other than anger, suck it up, suck it up, rub some dirt in it, bootstraps, like very much. And that is not okay because emotions, emotion is in motion. And when we are not processing our emotions, we then are then manifesting physical illness. And causes what? Dis-ease. Disease. Yep. 100%. I absolutely agree with you. That is something that I don't think the conversation has been had on a level where people can understand. Everyone talks up here and we want to be able to have even, even the people that are the most confused understand that. I mean, it all channels. Did you, did you know recently, this is just a side note, water has memory and I've been looking at these things. Homeopathy. Yes. And so you show, (laughs) right. All of the Ruby meds and all of those things that we go through. And what I noticed is when it looks at something or you show a picture to water, when it freezes, it freezes into that picture. There's this lady I follow on Instagram. Her name is Val. I'm going to butcher it. It starts with a V and her pictures are beautiful. She did one of tears recently, grief, happiness, joy, and sorrow, I believe, and then froze the tears. And it was fantastic. The images, 
came from that. And the ones that are angry are sharp and jagged with like not a lot of pattern. And the ones that are happy are these beautiful like snowflake fractals. It's so interesting to see. So we resonate on all those levels. So when we're talking about how that feels and what we've done to ourselves to push it all down, Mm -hmm. muscle holds memory. And I'll tell you as a massage therapist of 20 years, I have put someone on my table and the moment you touch certain spots, especially women in their hips, yeah, I have had laughing, gas, um, bawling, hysteria, so many things be released on my table because we've hit those things. Your body is holding all of that in there. Yeah. So if we don't have those discussions and we don't teach our people that it's okay to mm-hmm. lose your shit. Yeah. The, um, there's a book called The Body Keeps the Score by uh, Dr. Bessel van der Kock. And he is a, I believe German. Sorry if I'm wrong on that. Um, but his book, is, it's a good, like, uh, how do I say this? Like a do it yourself. It's yeah. really, he, he explains the research pretty well, but then he has like actions, things that you can do to start processing through. So it's a, what is the word I'm looking for? It's like a guidebook okay. on how to process your trauma. The handbook is, for the recently deceased. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A handbook on how to process your crap. Because the, the reality is we've all, all humans have experienced some sort of suffering, some sort of grief, some sort of you know, dis disappointment in their life that has led to maybe not processing, maybe whatever. I know all of us have experienced death on at least some level. Maybe your goldfish died. Maybe, maybe maybe the end of a relationship. Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing that's grieving and people don't realize. Like yes. death is not just an end result of a body somewhere. No. Death happens every day. The end the, of my first card. <laughs> The death of your car, the death of your best friend, physically or emotionally. Think about that. Like I had to let go of someone of 17 plus years. You've had to let go of people to better yourself, but you still mourn. And so mourning is something that happens just as much as happiness happens. But it's so spooky and macabre to talk about because as humans, we've put that out there. Now, I think more Americans, unfortunately, at that point, because if you look at your outer religions or your outer um, cultures, death is honored. It is. Death is highly honored. Even in, in, in Mexico, what do we have tomorrow? It's Day of the Dead. One of my favorite, favorite holidays, only because you get to see, like, that's where we cross that veil. And the idea of Day of the Dead is that shrine that you've created, that ofrenda is going to bring forth the opportunity for that gateway to be open for you mm-hmm. to communicate with them. You provide food, you provide flowers, you see, provide photos. Honor. And, you know, my friend sits in my living room, mm-hmm. well, in my dining room, 24-7. It yeah. is an honor. Like, I want my ancestors to be there. I want the people that I love that I'm not blood related to. And it can be anyone. It can be your dog. It can be the first love of your life. I had that happen, yeah. unfortunately, and James sits mm-hmm. on my ofrenda. You know, there are all of these things that, that I don't know, get excited about that. That's a really weird thing to say, but... Get excited about it. Surround yourself with things that make it more comfortable. And I'll tell you, I think for the rest of my life, I'll probably lose it and bawl and shake and cry. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm honored to be able to be in that presence. You know, the the awful death of my kitty of 17 years, that one hit me on a level where, you know, she died in my arms and there was nothing that I could do. And when I finally expressed it a year later publicly, one of my close friends, Mike Rice, decided to... Just slip one of those things in there that kind of ticks you a little bit Mm -hmm. to make you like rethink. And he said, what an amazing honor to die in the arms of someone you love or someone Mm -hmm. who loves you. And I just thought, thanks, man. Thanks for really putting that back into perspective for me because it was so tragic for me. And I felt so, that's the thing. You, You don't feel, you feel helpless. So you're trying to get a handle on that helplessness because feeling helpless is way less powerful than at least knowing part of what you're doing. For sure. You know, and that goes into planning. Mm. And I will tell you that at this point, we were talking about my mom and Dwayne and watching the planning that they did. And my mom is very open about it too. Like my mom will do some weird stuff and I'll, I'll, I'll have to tell her like, I can't talk to you about this right now. It's just weird because it's my mom. Sure, sure, sure. But she'll be like, so... There's a few things. Do you want them when I die? I'm like, why are we talking about this? But that's really what it is. Like my grandmother will send me things too. She starts sending me pictures of myself when I was little. And I'm like, grandma, what are you doing? She's just getting rid of things because, you know, when time comes, I don't know all of you that have had experience with 
after someone passes away, but this disrespect comes out of nowhere. And I think it's the grief because no one thinks properly with that grief in their head. Mm -hmm. And that disrespect is to show up at their house and try to take whatever you can to get a piece of them. Oh, I hate it, dude. And I sat and I watched my aunt's stuff when she passed, everyone would come in. My uncle snuck the earrings off of her ears when she was passed to give them to me so I could have something of hers because I didn't get anything because mm -hmm. everyone went in and went crazy. So this planning that we were going to discuss is really all about minding your P's and Q's and making sure everything, your yeah. your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted. Yeah. It can go anywhere from, like our my, my parents' financial planner was at our funeral and, and at the wake all the way from Colorado to Tennessee, because that's how connected they were. So yeah. your financial planning, um, and side note that I didn't realize until about five years ago, a financial planner isn't going to cost you money. What they're going to do is reap the benefits of what they invest. So they do take a percentage, but usually it's not a forward paying. So I recommend everyone look up a financial planner because once I found that out, I was like, oh, it makes it easier for people who don't have a lot of money. Right. I mean, I'm not rich, but I do have things that I would like to invest. Totally. So if you have something like that, you know, you can get your money in order that way. But the mindful things to do is how do you want your body to be handled? Right. That's a very, very uncomfortable question. I will tell you all now, at this point, after I've learned about water cremation and in Littleton, Colorado, there is a farm that grows flowers from that water of your body. Mm. So for the rest of your life, your family can come to your plot and cut flowers and have them in your house and have them of you. What a beautiful mm, I love that. thing, right? Like that's something that continues to grow. And I do want to pop in some, some really interesting, interesting information. information. If, if everyone, everyone thinks that, once you're in the ground, you're dead and you're in a box. I just mm -hmm. want to let you know what happens to your body and think about this <laughs> for a minute. So once your body has decayed and you have gone back into the earth and if you're in a box, you're kind of stuck. I would think that you would, I, w I don't know. I don't want my body to be stuck in a box. I don't want to be in a box. So Thank if we so put much. ourselves into the earth, the most amazing thing here is then the earth absorbs us, right? Well, then how do things grow? From the roots that drive into the ground that grab the water and whatnot and from the nutrients, there. Yep. And so the nutrients are us. So what an interesting thing to think about. That apple that you pluck or something that you get from the store. You're eating your ancestors. As weird as that sounds, but it is a sure. literal circle of life, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to think about how your body is. Uh, cremation is great. Um you can be sprinkled all over the place. I took some of my dad's ashes and I took him to Alaska with me and tossed nice. him when I went to Alaska. But you really want to make sure that you have that conversation because the person that is alive after you go doesn't have the mental or emotional capacity yeah. to do any of that because they have just lost someone or something so important to them. Yeah. And again, death dualship is there to help walk through those things. But mm -hmm. You want to have everything planned. And so <laughs> there are a few things that I brought. Yeah. Um, this is the death deck. We're going to go through a couple cards. The death deck is kind of a game to get people to talk about death. And this is the end of life deck. And the end of life deck, this is a tool that's used by families, caregivers, and healthcare providers to help facilitate conversations about your end of life wishes. So there's no sponsorship here. These are just two things from this company that I find to be really great. Mm -hmm. um, so... Are you okay with me opening this up and us yeah. starting? So I'll start with the death deck. We'll do something a little more lighthearted first. Yeah. And this is, uh, it's considered a game. Oops. But I just want to pull a card here and we'll kind of give an example of how this is going, if this sits well. Okay. So the first card that I pulled, it says self-help regarding your inevitable future demise. Mm -hmm. In what area are you most prepared and what area are you least prepared? Ooh, I have advanced directives. So if something happens to my body where I am not functioning and not functioning means to me not able to wipe my butt and not able to feed myself, if I'm, and there's no guarantee that those two uh, skills are going to be able to come back, like we don't need to be kept alive. DNR? DNR. Um, those, that's really the only area I've planned. Um, my mom died. And she was sick for right. like 10 years, right. like eight years is when she got diagnosed with breast cancer um, in her mental state, which was not sane, clinically not sane. Mm -hmm. um, she was so worried that the government 
something was going to get her that she chose to do no treatment. Oh. So she knew for nearly a decade she was ill and um, I was estranged from her. I didn't see her until her deathbed for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, similar situation, but she lived with my brother. Okay. So three, three, so three siblings, we had to make a decision on what do we do? Because now she's had, when I saw her, she had heart failure, lung failure, liver failure, and now her kidneys were the last major oh organ to go. Uh, I never want to look like that. I, I will understand. never unsee the image of what my mother looked like in that bed, basically like the Michelin man, like how yeah. swollen she was yeah. because of her kidneys and liver not functioning well. Um, and they were basically like, yeah, we don't really know how much longer she's going to live. But then the whole like thing that happens when you're almost dying where you have like that lucid you come back to life a little bit the nurses said she didn't open her eyes for like weeks we get there and of course she hasn't seen me in a decade and she's like looking at me and I'm like oh my god this is crazy I totally reverted into like a child state sure um and I wasn't able to say the things I needed to say to her but you know there was a mutual we had a mutual understanding with our nonverbal, <laughs> nonverbal sk skills but she did not plan a single fucking thing well and then and how did that challenging. leave you and your Hard. siblings and your siblings did you have a healthy relationship with no. your siblings based on those experiences and plans went back we agreed that we were going to pull the plug so she wouldn't be alone which was her biggest fear my sister was like oh my god what if she lives and i'm like in medical school and i'm like um you have multiple organ failure i mean maybe fat miracle chance. right miracles happen we can't like, ever not. say exactly probably not Probably not in reality. Don't hold on. This is don't hold on to a miracle. Plan that shit. Plan don't it. hold on to the Plan miracle. Plan for the worst. Because if you do it happens. now, like let's say you and I sat down and we had yep. some uncomfortable conversations. Oh, yeah. Five years down the road, one of us passes. We know what the hell we're going to do. Oh, yeah. We had that conversation when we were of full mind and body. Yeah. And so for you, and I am so sorry for those losses. Yeah. I know how those have affected you in this it's life. Terrible. And I will say that. They've affected your brother. They've affected your sister. 100%. Your whole entire upbringing has brought to this point where yeah. lack of communication has really been the base of all of this, right? 100%. It's and so, so crazy. the lack of planning. It's like I saw my um, husband's grandfather pass and the planning and the beauty that went into it and the peaceful passing he had at his home with hospice because he had cancer. So he was in a lot of pain was absolutely beautiful and like they planned for like how do we what kind of what kind of ceremony what kind of who do you want there who do you not want there you know you want to be able to move cows a few days before you die like there was so much thought that went into it and then how how about the kids how about the grandkids how do we plan this so right. everybody gets a little bit of support along the way and we're having those conversations to go from like the extreme to another like Whoa. but I'm so glad that you got to see yeah. that and I bet it felt so oh my God. different. You're able to mourn still, but you're able to mourn in comfort and Instead safety. Instead of like, I have no idea what this person wants. I yeah. just want to do what feels And that's best so for scary. <laughs> well, and there we go into where like in the end of everything, even my mom and, and yeah. Dwayne being so planned forward, he didn't like to talk about death. Yeah. And so when it came to the end of everything, my mom didn't know what to do with his body. And then she has his parents who are elders right trying to figure out that as well. And so what do you do? I mean, the process that I watched, and I've been to many a funeral, I've seen what, you know, they want to hold space and everyone wants to see the body and they want to be able to talk to that person. They put him on ice because you, she didn't want to do embalming. She didn't want to do any sort of autopsy because they didn't have the conversation about what he wanted to do with his body. Right. So the stress that she went through, I watched her. It was agonizing to see this woman who ha has lost her best friend of 17 years yeah. and and not know what to do with him and think that she's going to do something wrong because they weren't able to have that so then that sits on you because you can't have that conversation nope. she would wake up in the middle of the night in sweats and just be so sad and not know exactly what's going on yeah. and in the end there was a cremation and then I watched the disagreement between the families and that separate those families. Yeah. And so really the most important thing is to have those conversations. And that goes into least prepared. Ahead I, of time. <laughs> you have to, right? Because when we're cognizant now, like I'm in good health. Well, in a living will, you can change yeah. over yeah. and over again. Things change and it's something that can sit with you and it does cost a little bit of money. But boy, I will tell you that is 
I think it's priceless at that point to be able peace to have that mind. peace and sanity. Peace of mind for me, but peace of mind for my loved ones so that they can properly process. Yeah, that's you. And not have yes. to. So it's like yes. when my mom died, my sister and I d- disagreed and she decided to keep her alive. Oh. We are then go to her home. Nothing is packed. And of course, that what you said, like my sister just starts going and rummaging. All I wanted was a picture of me and my mom because I didn't really have one. And, like, it would have been nice. She was a jeweler. She had all these, like, different um, ju- old pieces of jewelry that she had. And, you know, as much as I would have liked to have one more piece from her, I just wanted that picture. That's all that I really cared about. Did you get it? I did. I got a picture. It needs Good. to be restored. Um, a little bit scratched up. But, dang, you know, that to see... And I don't want to paint my sister in a bad p- way because grief... Box that's with us. right. So that's severely. exactly right. Like right. you go into this weird. I've seen people throw themselves on coffins. Like it. It really does. And I don't think you're painting someone in in an awful light. I think you're just speaking truths. Yeah. And for her, the way that she was unable to handle it affected exactly. you. Then it did. Right. Like this Pretty is a ripple effect across mm-hmm. the board. And and I don't know. I think death is supposed to bring people together. Sadly, I agree. I agree. Um, ah, that's like a perfect let me read this yeah, please. let me read this little so this is out of the book of love by Rumi translated by Coleman Barks um, your grief for what you've lost lifts a mirror up to where you've bravely working expecting the worst you look and instead here's the joyful face you've been wanting to see your open hands close open close and if you're always in a fist always stretched open you'd be paralyzed your deepest presence is in every small contracting and expanding. The two as beautiful, balanced, and coordinating as bird wings. Like, we yeah. have to grieve. We have to have sorrow. They're yin and yang. We'll never not have Well, and then that bird the has the freedom at the end, right? Exactly. That flight, that ability to just... To be as sick as my mom was. Like, it sounds like uh, uh, Dwayne was in good health. And yes. he just kind of went to sleep. That's my ideal. I don't want to be So, suffering. how funny is that? Because the next question that I just found, timing-wise, what would be the best way to die? Here, we've got ABCs. A, mm. instantly without warning or pain. Within three months of a diagnosis, uncomfortable but able to do a few less things. After a year of terminal illness, in pain, but time for my family and me to prepare. So, tell me what you would think out of those three, but I already have. Uh, it's it, For me, it's instant. Like... It, that's a bit of a selfish thing, but like I'm watching my grandma who broke her hip in 2020, who's had multiple major strokes and minor strokes in between now and then, and she just had one this year. And yeah. I was like, okay, this is going to be the end. And like, she's like struggling. She's like not really living the, a life that in my like mind- Like waiting to die yeah, essentially at and, this point. Yeah. And like the struggle of seeing my uncle take care of her in this process versus- or my mom, the 10 years to be sick. Or like, to me, like going in my sleep or, you know, um, when I was dealing with suicidality when I was a teenager, um, I had a revelation that going and climbing Mount Everest and freezing to death or oh. dying from lack of oxygen would be a much more honorable way to die yeah. than to end my life. And like, painful. Well, but, I also, but I, I do hear that some of those, the two things that you brought up are like two, <laughs> two of the most peaceful ways to die. Exactly. <laughs> I've heard drowning is also quite peaceful. Yeah, I have too, sadly. Um, R.I.P. Chandler. Yeah. So sad. Uh, uh, so oh, Matthew Perry. Hmm. Interesting enough, that was really, what a, what a nice little connection that we had that I just randomly pulled this card and it was random, I promise. Uh, I think it's about this good. and instantly without warning or pain would be great if I had had the time to plan with my family. So I feel like it's all three. Right. Right. There are so many ifs when it comes to that. Okay. I die instantly. I'm good to go. My mom is going to have to show up and go through that all over again. She's going to have to see all the things and go through everything in my house and, and us not have anything. That's planned. a, what's the, what's the minimalist lady, the Marie Kondo? Ah, uh, the that joy is, lady. The, that is a, cause again, does it bring you love joy? my grandma, but she was born in the great depression. Yes. Yeah, so like, everything is are, hoarders, right? There are things that I'm like, that is trash. And she's like, that is <laughs> certainly not trash. And I'm yeah. like, okay, that's interesting. So there's generational differences in what we think. And like, I've got junk in my house, but like, I don't have like, can lids that I'm going to put hole punches in and put in the <laughs> fruit trees in my yard. Right? right. And like, again, it's, it's a wise use of resources, but it's taking up space and thinking then my uncle having to go through some of that. And, well, and, you and know, you being the beautiful creature that you are probably showing up and assisting in those things I, with I your family. Would, you know what I'm saying? My uncle is, you know, I don't know him well, but he has shown up for me enough in my life that it's like, I would want to do him the, 
the the right yeah. thing there and like be there in his time because he he takes care of my grandma and she's my most important family member yeah and he's been the one that's like the main person for her and so in that once again bringing families together in this case of sadness yeah. that's where you interject your doula or you bring in I mean I I just can't stress it enough plan 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 plan, plan. especially with all the bullshit that's going on in the world these days. And we're losing life left and right. Mm -hmm. Yours is going to go away. There are two things that we do together. And the two things that we do together in this life is we are born together and we die together. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we live our lives. But those are the two common things in humanity that happen to every single human being. Unless you're Walt Disney and you get frozen in time. And maybe you come back to do whatever. But you you know what I mean? Like, that's really what it is. So out of those two things, like... We, we are so excited about life and we're so enthralled and, oh my God, they just had a baby. But I'll tell you, it's very sad if someone has a miscarriage or goes through something and it's one of the scariest, saddest things in their sure. lives and there's so much shame that's surrounded by that. Why not have someone come over and hold space with you and mm-hmm. make you laugh and tell you stories and yeah. remind you that it's okay? Yeah. You know, those are things that I, I don't, I wish that I understood more. And I guess just my entire life I've been enthralled with the idea of the macabre it's it's given me soothing I mean you've been in my house (laughs) it it shows us like that's what I love about that poem it shows us the places we've been working and for me having just had a miscarriage a few weeks ago it was hard for me and and I'm grateful that I had you to come sit with me and remind me I'm grateful and to cry with me yeah and for me to cry in front of you because it then shows me that I'm growing as a person but also that I've been working on letting go and not letting things bear like hold me down anymore Well, because it only hurts you. It does. And that's what people also need to understand is, and this is the same with anger. And if you're angry at yourself or you're embarrassed at yourself, the only person you're re-traumatizing over and over again Mm -hmm. is you. 100%. It's not the person you're angry at. They've done it. Do you need that apology? Do you need you just need need them to to admit the fucked up shit that they did to you? No, you don't actually need that to move on. What you You need think you do is that compassion within yourself to know that it's okay. And those are things that I would I would I would talk to people about it constantly. I mean, I end up saying some of the weirdest shit and the most (laughs) uncomfortable stuff in conversations. And you're one of my favorite persons to have a conversation with in public because we just talk about fucked up excuse me messed up stuff and just life is real. it's good yeah it's, it's normalizing these hard conversations because in family constellations if anyone is familiar family constellations is a german new medicine technique sort of that y- you kind of transcend generational trauma to be able to process it mm-hmm. and there's usually one central person and the most common un like unshared trauma in a family lineage is miscarriage And with miscarriages being one in four pregnancies and um, about 10% of those one in four are clinically diagnosed pregnancies. So most people don't know when they have a miscarriage that they've had a miscarriage. Heavier bleeding, heavier period, a little more crampy type thing. So early on, with 10% of pregnancies, known pregnancies ending that way, that's one in 10. And not that many women will discuss it. I have a friend that talked with me about it. Um, She didn't tell anybody for a year. She had shame, a right? Huge amount of shame. I felt embarrassed. I'm like, oh my God, I told all these people that I'm having a baby and there's that expectation and the planning and la 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 la. And you know what? God has other plans. And it was to remind me, and there was other things that I'm not really wanting to discuss right now, That's but it was okay. like letting go of that process and coming to an end with that. And like, that's it. And like, there's some beauty there. I I believe that's what we need to find is the beauty in that, that, that peace in there and to sit with that. And, and that's really all that it comes down to is people aren't comfortable sitting with those feelings. Oh, it's, I mean, shit, (laughs) I am uncomfortable sitting with most feelings, but once you do it more and more, that discomfort tends to move aside so you can process a little bit better. It's a, it's a muscle. And like, I have shared this with you and Anger is an emotion I'm far more comfortable with. Me too. It's so much easier. It's safer. It's more controlled versus sadness being not that. It's Well, it that's the inevitable me. too, right? Yeah. You're just like, and it, and it gets scary. And I'll tell you, I think with sadness, when you don't know if you have 
in your body the idea of getting super sad and not coming out of it. Exactly. I think that's another fear that I have always. Definitely. Always. That it's because be I'm never like, ending. yes. Yeah. But it is. Feelings stop. If you feel them, if you don't, you're pushing those down. So then what are you doing? You're projecting that onto whoever you're trying to care for and love. Yeah. And that could be a child, that could be a spouse, that could be a parent, it could be a stranger. The anger that we've got, I mean, the things that I, that article I sent you about what they found at Glenwood Canyons yeah. the other day, that person, I'm, what kind of anger did they sit with? What kind of things in them brought them to the idea right. that they were going to cause chaos like so that, you know? Destruction. And so that's where all of that sits and becomes that dis-ease or that disease yeah. and it can be mental illness 100%. physical illness i mean there are people that go through so much physical illness cancers i mean autoimmune disease like there's so many things that like just snap a person i think that sits in there and it boils up like a an ulcer an ulcer will get in there and an ulcer will cause way more problems that's a hole in your stomach that's a giant blister in there just seething and seeping because you're unable to let shit go yep that is what happens. And you are that you're, you're the body part of your choice are your intestines and your organs that in mm -hmm. your stomach that you really think. And I agree with you. I think that because our intestines and our brain look very similar, right? We have two brains in our body mm -hmm. and this one I think feels, and this is just process. This I is fully agree with you. you know, this I, is brain one. We yes. call this second brain, but this is brain one that tells yeah. us are your, we safe? your are horror, we okay? your everything comes in this space. Life comes in this space it sure does. and this is just that computer that and that those are the two things that talk so when something is wrong here something is wrong here and and i i love that this kind of medicine is starting to become more prominent the because microbiome yeah and our yeah. medical fields right now don't yeah. don't take care of that they give you they give you um Antibiotics and to, antidepressants. Yes. That, oh, you're sad. Here's an antidepressant. So I was just talking with someone about microdosing the other day because of oh, yeah. this, because they were on Lexapro and Lexapro goes in and it takes the little, when, when you have depression, uh, the little thing that stops your serotonin is closed right. consistently. Yep. And so you don't get those little bursts of serotonin. Mm -hmm. And so Lexapro keeps it open. Mm-hmm. So you're constantly getting these little spits of serotonin. And then when you shut that down and you turn yourself off of them from it, that's where your suicidal tendencies come into yeah. play because you've removed all of that from your body in a big jolt. Right. You do plant medicines and, and naturopathic medicine and all of those things. It is a consistent healing that slowly helps to work on it. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't shut the rest of your body down. No. It aids in all of it growing. It does. And that is that is something that I think is really important too. But back onto this because you yes. and I could go off oh, and yes, talk and about so many mumbo things. Jumbo associated um, with the serotonin chemical yeah, I know. receptor so the, baloney. The end of life deck. This is the one that I think is the most important for folks so they can have their um, conversation about stuff, yeah. right? So I'm just going to open up one of the things that comes through. So you're dying and, mm -hmm. and, or, you know, maybe you're not dying. Maybe we're just going to have this conversation because I want to make sure that I have everything prepared for you okay. when it's time. So would you describe yourself as a worrier? A, yes. And so when everyone who knows me, B, not usually, but my anxiety has recently increased with my illness. Mm. C, no, I'm usually able to work through worries pretty easily. I would say it depends. Mm -hmm. um, I have anxious tendencies um, I have a history of worrying. Like if there's something I just don't know or don't understand, the, the then unknown. I'll kind of like linger, 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 yeah. linger, um, kind of ruminate on it for a while. Um, hard to say until you're in one of those positions, right? It's like, cause I imagine, you know, a quick, I don't want to imagine the like, right. oh, I get diagnosed with this thing and like, it's going to be long and drawn out. Like, you know, Huntington's or dementia or something, you know, oh really unpleasant. God. Yeah. Alzheimer's, for goodness sake. There's so many things in there where you'd lose yeah. control. That Exactly. See, the loss of control, hence the, if I can't wipe my bum and I can't feed myself. I feel you. I mean, that's a hard thing to do for someone. Like I agree. I don't want my loved one to have to do that. For well, me. and maybe they, and heaven forbid, maybe they're not your loved one at that point because they right. don't have the capacity yeah, the to do that. Or and they're like, bye, I can't do this for Just, you, right? 
kick me out of the boat. <laughs> All right, another question. And what I want everyone to realize is what we're doing here is not really looking for an end answer, but we're opening up this conversation yeah. where Shana now feels comfortable to be able to have this conversation with someone, right? Right. So here's another one, a grief guide. Let's think about this. What's one piece of advice you'd like your family and friends to know to help ease their grieving process? Poetry. Sweet. So when you die, yeah. one of the things you would probably want people to bring is poetry Definitely. or say those things, or you have, might have mm -hmm. a poem that gets read to them. Mm -hmm. So for you, when you pass, your loved ones will know that yeah. if you read this book, you'll remember me. Those are the kind of things, right? I mean, yeah. let's dig into one more. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a good one for you. How interesting these cards I keep pulling. <laughs> My relationship with spirituality slash religion is non-existent, something that brings me comfort very important to me. It is very important to me and it's my own personal philosophy that I've kind of developed from, um, I only been able to say the word God comfortably in the last three or four years. Yeah. Um, I've kind of repaired that relationship, understanding that it's my relationship. Correct. There's no other thing that's around my relationship. It's me and God. Right. You and don't whatever need I, no. all of the no. snazzy mumbo jumbo. No. And I love studying, you know, a lot of people say Hinduism is a, is a polytheistic religion. It's actually not. Interesting. One God, different manifestations of the same God. I like that. Fantastic, right? Because it kind of gives you like the different like... Um, archetypes that you might need like absolutely in the so for you're 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 in this space you need this person to call to you but it's just a, an extended entity of the full mm -hmm. universal spirit yeah. or yeah. whatever that would be exactly for I, I i, I really that. like that yeah and it's like we yeah. get to i get to make what i want of it and i want people to bring their own like you be you you bring your own philosophy, but the one thing I will say that um, really offended me about my mom's death is there was a woman she was spending time with who was a very strong Christian woman. Mm -hmm. My mom converted to Islam when I was in middle school, and it's a point that I used to ugh, so annoyed sure. by it. But those those humans welcomed me into their mosque, let me ask questions, let me not dress up, dress the part, like they let me be an antagonistic asshole teenager and get what I needed to get from them. That's and that was beautiful. so valuable for me because I don't feel like I've gotten that from the different Christian churches I've gone to. Like they allowed me that space to process. Yeah. And this woman on my mom's deathbed converted her back to Christianity. And I feel like maybe my mom... Per your mom, was she co cognizant or did she I just do it? No, dude, yeah, that's have multiple organ failures. That's an agenda. Huge disrespect. That's an that's agenda. That's the whole thing of like, if you're not Christian, you're going to hell. Yeah. And I know that not all Christians are this way, but like that is... Not okay. You Any fear-driven religion is not okay. You do not, but this is why these questions are so important. Correct. Because how did that person? Maybe that person had had a relationship with my mom prior. Because I didn't. Right. So I don't know. I'm just being protective of what I did know about my mom, and that was that she converted to this other faith or reverted, is what they say in Islam, because they were the people that helped us when we had no place else to go. They when Christianity us, shit on you, 100%, essentially, and in fact told us that we weren't paying tithes. Sorry, you can't come anymore. How awful. And not all Christian churches are I was are this just going to say, that. I, know I know some very, very good Christians out there. I also know other sources of religion that they have negative, negative 100%. portions as well. This is not a dig on Christianity. This is my unfortunately experience. experience. Yeah. And not just yours, mine too. So many people. And, and, and that is why, I mean, I went to private school mm -hmm. and when I had any questions where I really just wanted to know what was going on. And that's the idea. Like asking questions is okay. Yeah. And we're taught that it's not it okay, okay. That you just, just have blind faith and believe. And I want to know because that's a safety for it me. It helps me understand. Yeah. And it's not that I need a definitive answer. Like I'm okay with. Well, no, what know, is Someone area. said, like, I, I don't know. Maybe we could look at that together. Exactly. What a great way to learn with someone. So in general, find those things, no matter what it is. Find the things that are comfortable. Have these conversations mm -hmm. because, look, we were just able to open these things up. And not everybody is as communicative as you and mm -hmm. I are. We've, we, we have I a think, good friendship. Well, but I think we're also born to be these people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. You know, take it down a notch, Shana. Take it down a notch, Jennifer. But we don't take it down a notch. And that's what <laughs> moves us forward so quickly. Right. And uh, we have the ability to have these conversations. So that's what I think both of us are here for as well as to hold someone's hand in that space to have and that have conversation. Those difficult quote unquote difficult conversations and know that you know I want my patients to feel comfortable having these interesting conversations with me I agree and know that I'm not going to judge them no matter what they say I may disagree 
but that's not my place. My place is to be listening and have compassionate empathy for them in that moment. My doctor knows everything. Even stuff my family doesn't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have information on me that other folks may or may not, other doctors I've yeah. seen. But when it comes to death, how easy was this conversation today? How, I mean, think it was, about it that. It was easy. Challenge, but easy. And, and it kind of sits and it makes you feel. Yeah. But you can move forward with these tools that are given to you. You don't even need these. This no. is just an aid. Mm -hmm. And to have aid these days seems to be much easier now because when you don't know how to start something, and again, you moving don't away ever from like it. different faiths, which has been the main way of processing. Right, exactly. So and now that was the whole idea. Exactly. So we're finding another way to like that growth expand in another place to help us process the fact of life. In order for there to be life, there will be death. And that is a fact. <laughs> How fun for something to be held where we could have an open quorum with people that just ask questions death about cafe? death. I would be so down. We should consider it. It would be a lot of fun. I, death and cupcakes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I would okay, love that. Coming to I would absolutely the love Yarrow that. maybe or something. We'll, oh my God, it would be at the Yarrow. That. They would they would hold it no problem. I've really appreciated this today. Thank you so much for bringing me into yeah. here. I, I I've wanted to discuss this and bring it up so much, and you've given me a platform to mm -hmm. do that. And I really respect what you do and who you are. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So um, if my viewers would like to find you, ah. how do they find you? So Get in um, contact with you. let's let's start with social media, and we'll go from there. My account is public. It's just my regular account. I don't have a death doula account at this point. Uh, and then we can, if you message me, we can go phone number from there because I would really love to put that out there. Um, so it's <laughs> Jenna underscore Sequa. It is J E N N A underscore S A I S Q U. Oh, I, I'll put this in the chat, yeah. like the box below. Don't it, worry. You know, um, and then <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have a conversation, but hop on there. Follow me. Let's, let's start talking about death and let's start bringing it, um, to the foreground. And I'd love if you're in the area to sit, let's have coffee. Yeah. I would be so down to, to have that conversation. That have soon. Girl, it's going to happen because I love this idea. So much. Fun. I love it. Um, and my next up guest, she'll be visiting us from the Rocky Mountains somewhere, but she's virtual. I met her on social media, Dr. Diana. She is a biologic dentist, and we're going to be talking Ooh. about the mouth. And believe it or not, the mouth, the oral microbiome, hugely relates to acid reflux. So I have a big uh, desire to have these conversations with these biodentists um, and get her some support as well. So stay tuned for that. That'll be an episode we drop in November. Um, like and subscribe. If you've been enjoying this channel, I really appreciate you to subscribe so I can get a custom URL so I can and have my Dr. Shana L. Keller ND URL be really great. And um, thank you so much for tuning in today. We talked about death philosophies, our own personal philosophies, getting a little uncomfortable discussing death and the questions around death and planning. There's various levels of planning and how planning can be great and not planning can be awful, awful, <laughs> but also, you know, anything in between depending on what's going on. Um, and, you know, the idea that grief is a gift and it shows us places that we are growing and becoming and expanding. And grief is metal, man. Grief is metal. And ironically, <laughs> ironically enough, grief in Chinese medicine is, is actually the elemental metal. metal. Anyway, it's great. Love it. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.